Welcome back, everybody, to your three-man booth heading into NFL Week 10. Dan Salem with Phil and Bud. The, the Giants are on a bye. The Jets have an interesting matchup with Buffalo. We pulled off some good uh, good wins last week in ATS. Well, I'm actually going to take the Jets plus 13 because that's the best line we saw against Buffalo. Not to say that they're going to win the game outright. I don't know if it has too much to do with the fact that Buffalo lost to Jacksonville because they're probably going to be pissed off, but the Jets have been playing okay, right? They came back against Indianapolis. They haven't been getting the doors blown off, but I'll take the 13 points. I, I think that's that's a lot of points that you're getting later in the year. The weather's getting colder. The ball doesn't go as far. Not as many points are scored, so I'll, I'll take the points. And then I'm just going to take Pittsburgh, and I'm going to lay the eight and a half against Detroit. I, I think that's enough said. Yeah, I'll hold my thoughts on the Jets until after our picks, but those, those are two solid covers, I think. Who you got, Who you got, Glenn? I'm going to take the Packers uh, laying three against the Seahawks. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to come back. And I think we all proved uh, or saw, you know, what that uh, Packers team is without Aaron Rodgers. So I think, and he, I think he's just going to have something to prove. And then I'm going to, um, I'm going to stick with tradition here and I'm going to pick uh, Buffalo. Lay the points. Laying 12 and a half, you know, against Mike White's Jets. <laughs> why the, why the hell not? I'm sticking in the division. I'm picking against the Patriots with the Browns. The Browns are getting points. I think they're getting two and a half. And I, I know New England has won a couple of games. I know their defense is looking decent. But Cleveland absolutely blew away a pretty good Cincinnati team. I think that the Bengals are pretty good. They can score a lot of points. And the Browns just handled them. I mean, Mac Jones is due for a rookie mistake game. And I, I'm not sure this is going to be it, but they're going to win. The Browns are a playoff team. I don't think the Patriots are there yet. So I'm, I'm taking Cleveland. I'm also going to take 10 points with the Atlanta Falcons. They are playing the Dallas Cowboys, who also got humiliated last weekend. Oh, so and great. I, I don't know. I, I don't think that the Cowboys are literally that bad, but I absolutely don't think they were as good as their five and one record or six and one record up to this point. They are not a well rounded team. And Atlanta can score a lot of points. So 10 should be more than enough to cover that game. So the Giants are on a bye. The Jets get the Buffalo Bills. But Mike White's back. I don't know. Well, if here's, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Do you think, now obviously I was completely incoherent last week. If you, <laughs> if you, if you think Mike White did not get hurt in that game, does Indy not win? Well, that's a he, had two, he had two drives in the game. The first drive, he looked okay. Second drive, he looked awesome. So, so here's here's the problem. Indianapolis solved the Jets' defense for half the game, about two out of the four quarters, and they the Jets could not stop them. But they also did not control the ball during that same time period. I mean, Josh Johnson had an adjustment period. I, I feel like he came in, and it took him almost till the second half to really – get going, but then I think Indianapolis probably let up because they were blown away, and then he kind of right. started to be able to throw. So I think it would have been much closer all the way through. And, and I think that it would have been at least more competitive with Mike White. Now, listen, we, we can talk uh, you know, until the Cowboys come home about a quarterback controversy. If, if Mike White comes out and, and beats Buffalo Ooh. and looks great, yeah. What did the Jets do? I mean, this is typical Jets. I think I may have said this last week. I don't remember. But this is like, literally, this is typical Jets, right? So so I read a quote how the same thing happened in Josh Allen's rookie year, something similar. Like, he went, he got injured. Matt Barkley came in, had an amazing game. And they were qual- questioning whether Matt Barkley should stick his quarterback. They pulled Barkley, put Josh Allen back in, and he finished off his rookie season. And now we know what he's playing at, the level he's playing at. It's not uh, it's not a direct comparison, but the point is, if he's your quarterback in the future, when he's healthy, he's the quarterback, no matter how good Mike White is. Uh, now, it's hard to say that if Mike White's exceptional again. I don't know if Barkley had more than one game to, to do that. But as a long-suffering Jets fan, Dan, we are, we are thirsty for something to cling on to. I know. You know what I mean? So, like... We have this high hope, this great white hope of, uh, of of Zach Wilson, and he comes in and he he plays okay, but he doesn't play great, right? Which is typical of a rookie quarterback. And then you get this other quarterback, he comes in in the second half of the football game, doesn't look great, but then he comes out against a team that you should not beat, and he plays lights out. Yeah, right. This is, this is my thought. He, he's a veteran. He's got a he's got 
three or four seasons under his belt. Now, granted, he didn't start, but he learned multiple offenses, got to play behind multiple good quarterbacks along the way. So he's seasoned, and, and, and Wilson isn't. I guess the question comes down to, do you think the Jets can make the playoffs? That's not out of the question, and it sounds absurd for me to even postulate it. But the reason you kick stick with White is because you think he can make the playoffs. Otherwise, Wilson should come in. It's a, it's a throwaway year. But then what you've, what you've essentially done is you've created an, an environment where you drafted a guy too, but you're not playing him because you don't think he's good enough to have your team play the scheme that you want them to play. So you're going to play this guy who's been cut 10 times. And now what do you do with Zach Wilson? Now I I agree with you that Zach Wilson is the future. And I think we all, all three of us would agree that that is, that is the way that the team has to progress, but, and I'm not comparing him to this at all. If he comes out and plays great this week and, and beats Josh Allen, and he throws another 400 yards, three touchdowns, doesn't turn the ball over. The offense is clicking, everything else. People are going to compare him to Tom Brady. And I'm not saying that he, he is Tom no, no, Brady no, no. because he, he is not. He has to play that well for there to be a controversy. If he if they win and he just plays 200 yards, two touchdowns, no, it's Wilson's team. I mean, you can't not give the, the, the team back to Wilson. There's also the, – you're, you're also um, – it's hard to quantify this, but – their offensive coordinator has been in the booth ever mm-hmm. since Wilson went down. He's yep. going to stay in the booth. And that's going to make a huge difference when Wilson comes back for how he calls the game for him. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to go back to Wilson as long as he's healthy. Now, if White's killing it, maybe he, they let his injury lag out an extra week or two. But otherwise, How long are you going to be able to play that injury off? Well, you're so two to four, it's a two- to four-week injury. It's already three weeks. You can buy another this week and next week at the most. Right. But then Wilson should come back in. And honestly, I mean, unless they win both weeks, they're out of the playoffs. So what's the difference? He should come back in. What if you win the next two weeks? What do you do? Oh, man, you're four and five. I mean, that's great. <laughs> uh, let's get there first, because that's a that's a big ask. And I what listen, I know that you are far removed from it. But the New York, the New York media, I mean, Phil, you can attest to this. Mm-hmm. This is all they're talking about. This yeah. is all they're, all, all they're talking about is whether or not. Mike White is the next Tom Brady. Well, it's inter- I mean, it's interesting talk, and it's it's very polarizing. He hasn't had a full game since his spectacular game, so it's it's still on the table because the one or two drives he played before he hurt his hand, he scored a touchdown, and did well. The, I, I would have say that the Jets know what they're doing, and I trust them to make the right decision because we saw how Sam Darnold continued to play like Sam Darnold, and now he's hurt, and Cam Newton's coming back to the, the Panthers. I mean. He had a couple good games. He had a couple bad games, and he was the reason they lost the game. He was never the reason they won. And so they made, they made the right decision there. They made the right decision with Jamal Adams. They made the right decision with Marcus May because now Marcus May hurt his, hurt his whatever he injured, he's out for the year. So it's better that they didn't sign him. Or his Achilles. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a tough injury to ever come back for. So from a business standpoint, they made the right decision. And speaking of Darnold, he just took his last snap as a starting quarterback in the NFL. 100%. That's yeah. it. I mean, he, he hurt his shoulder. It's over. Yeah. Well, that, regardless, it's it, even if he wasn't hurt, it's it. That's it. It's over. He's well, not getting got back for Cam. And who? Where, where is he going to be a starting quarterback next year? Well, is he under yeah. contract though? Isn't he still? Is he still? They picked the up his fifth year option for eighteen million dollars. This, I mean, so so he's going to be their backup, right? An eighteen million dollar backup, much like Nick Foles. No, <laughs> it's guaranteed money. So even if they cut him, he's either going to be backup or he's going to be holding a clipboard at eighteen million dollars. It's nuts. Yeah. Him well, going back to Carolina. That's that's oh, wow. I, I, I will argue that it was nuts that the Panthers gave him so much money when he was unproven as a starter. Like, I mean, it's one thing to sign the guy, it's another thing to sign him for a guaranteed money like that. Well, they traded for him too. So they obviously had a obviously he was, you know, gave up a ton of picks for him. No, I, I mean he had potential. I think the Jets I think the Jets sold it up though. Like they were like, well, you know, I don't know. There's a decision. Do we want to keep Darnold? Do we want to go with Wilson? Maybe we'll keep them both. So then they got someone to overpay. I mean, I, I think Darnold could be a decent quarterback, but he's never been in a situation in which it really jived with his personality. The first three weeks he looked awesome, and then and then he has looked every bit of an awful quarterback since then. Well, weren't those the first three weeks with Christian McCaffrey? Didn't he get hurt in the yeah. third? 
There you go. Yeah. I would say. I think that's your. Been, I think that's your answer. He's always been streaky though. That that one season that they had decent. Like weren't they one and six, and then they went, and then they finished seven and nine. So like he was super streaky. So we're doing the show during live during the uh, the, the Dolphins Ravens game. Can we just talk? It's a terrible about, game, by the way. Can we, can we just talk about how freaking frustrating the Ravens are? They played a couple really good games. I actually thought they were a decent team, and now they're they're letting the Dolphins, who I guess the Dolphins did this to Buffalo for a half. But they're letting the Dolphins push them around. I don't even understand. It was like six to three at halftime. What is it's this? It's six to three right now after three. It's six to three. This is garbage football. Like, what, what happened? The Dolphins don't have that great of a defense. I mean, they're and, good, and but... they started Jacoby Brissett, and now two is in. <laughs> right, because Brissett got hurt. Oh, so they benched Tua, and now and now Tua's got to go back in. Well, Tua Tua was available in emergency situations, and that emergency situation poked mm-hmm. its head. Well, is Lamar Jackson playing? Because what the hell? Yeah. How did he disappear? Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, again, as we said before, I'm my fantasy team is not not complaining about this score because I'm playing yeah. against Lamar and Marquis. I am not worried about this score at all, personally. So, so we're we're headed. This is week rich 10. get richer, Phil. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, so this is week ten. Through seven weeks, we thought we knew what the league was, and we were absolutely wrong because I mean, the Ravens and the and the Bengals have have evened out. I'm not surprised that Pittsburgh's in the hunt. I'm not surprised New England's in the hunt, but Buffalo evened out. It's like the entire AFC is slightly above average. There's nobody that stands out now. Tennessee has played very, very well. That's true. Now, Tennessee lost to the Jets in overtime. So, in theory, yeah, they're they're six and two, but they could very easily be seven and one. And the way that they dominated the Rams on Sunday night without Derrick Henry and, you know, Tannehill not playing great for a quarter and a half, um, picking up a, a a running back that I didn't even know was still interested in playing football. I would not, I would not put it past Tennessee to, to do this in the AFC. Yeah, Cleveland's not, no. I like Cleveland, but they're still a five and four or five and they're, they're right in the middle. So I think Cleveland's going to be a whole different team now that OBJ is gone. I really do. I do too. Do you think the Rams are going to be a whole different team with OBJ? I do. I don't know why. And we talked about this before we got on. I don't know why they picked him up. They didn't need him. You have Woods. You have Cooper Cup. You have a solid running game. You have a good offensive line. You got a world class yeah. defense and a quarterback. The only thing I, I can mean, we talked about, about this last year. Cleveland was so much of a better football team when OBJ was not on the field. Yeah. Well, he's so here's the thing. In Cleveland, he was in his mind the clear number one. I'm equating this to the the uh, Buccaneers signing Antonio Brown late in the year last year because it was like an ace in the hole that they didn't necessarily need to use, but they pulled him out in the playoffs for a big game or two, and it really I mean it made a difference. So we were talking about the AFC evening out. Do we think the NFC's evened out? I mean, I know I don't think that the Rams' loss to the Titans really means anything negatively against them. Tennessee's a good team. Still the Rams until further notice. I mean, if, I think if Beckham went to Green Bay, that would have been a much better spot for him to land because you have Devontae Adams and that's it. Well, are we writing off the Cardinals because Kyler Murray is hurt? Well, I'm not sure writing them off, but they – Murray's they hurt. looked really good last week. Hurt. Yeah. I mean, they got to be at full strength, though, right? The Miami's what are, what are, Phil, right what are you now. watching? What are you watching over there, Phil? I got, I got the oh. game on in front of me. Because you keep you – keep... Keep looking up. I'm just curious. Well, I'm trying to give you, you, know, I'm trying to give you Seinfeld real time. or, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm trying to give you a real time. Uh... Oh, jeez. Well, well, this is Score. your first time actually commenting on the game. So. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Miami was third and goal and a lineman just caught a ball. Listen, if you guys want to come to the game after Christmas, the tickets are $24 a ticket right now against Jacksonville. It's more expensive to park than it is to go to the game. 